be here. Don't worry, don't worry about that. I'm, I'm, I got you, people. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. So by, by way of introduction, good, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And depending on where you're, you're signing in from, this is the Covenant Nation Film and Theatre Community Group. This group was designed by the church to connect people with similar interests in particular industries together. And we belong to the film and theater group. This is our, um, it runs in semesters. So this is the first semester for 2021. I believe there'll be one more, perhaps two more um, in the course of the year. But the whole idea is to get people within the church who have passion for filmmaking to interact with industry experts, just to have a better understanding of, you know, the craft of filmmaking, some of the naughty points that, you know, filmmakers encounter all of the time. And ladies and gentlemen, today we have the pleasure of, of uh, hosting Dimbo Atia. Um, Dimbo and I did a course together in 2009. I believe that was uh, British Council and Lagos Business School with the University yeah. of um, La Morgan at the time. Um, yeah. You know, most of us were probably just starting out in 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 our various uh, careers at the time, mm -hmm. um, and and honestly, Dimbo has been a very he's been what I call a shining light in northern Nigeria. I I was born in Canada, and I did my secondary school in Jos, so I'm I'm more northern than than <laughs> western. So I mean, I really understand what it means for for film to break in the North because it's not, it's not a common medium for communication. And uh, Dimbo has, you know, been able to, you know, been, has been very forceful in bringing quality to, to the kind of, um, and the kind and the quality of, of entertainment that has come out from Northern Nigeria. Okay, so I'll just read his profile. I know that I've sent it, but I really want to honor this, this great man today. So I'm going to just pick pieces of it. So Dimbo, um, He's the CEO of Innovative Television Content, a company that produces clean, and I want to focus on this clean and wholesome family TV content. Um, my family is a big fan. My wife is Dimbo's very good friend. Uh, and they used to, I think you guys were in media units in Family yeah. Worship Center. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So we, we watch all your shows at home. Uh, you know, he's a, he's a TV, create, uh, TV creator, producer, writer, director. He studied film at the Nigerian Film Institute of Journalism, at the Nigerian Institute of Journalism, JOS, and then the National Film Institute, and then went to the you know, Film Academy. His early works include producing the talk show for Mo Abudu, I'm sure many of us know no moments with Mo, and um, also Niger Diamond. And then he went ahead to create, you know, what I consider to be the best TV show that, that, that picturesquely wow. shows Northern Nigeria in its in its glamour, you know, Sons of the Caliphate. I mean, you, 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 you need to, if you haven't seen that show, I beg you to please watch it. You know, it just presents, you know, the, the cream of, <laughs> and maybe we'll talk about that in the course of this, of this session today. You know, what, what inspired you to create that, that show? And I hope season three is coming out soon because uh, before you start seeing <laughs> First, that's in Abba made songs of the Caliphate. Please don't, don't <laughs> do something about it. Okay. Um, so please see songs of Caliphate if you haven't. He's also created other content, um, including short films like Flip, That Awkward Moment, and Halita. Halita is a TV show, um, runs on Africa Magic, and then um, commissioned by Africa Magic to, um, sorry, and then drawing strength. And he also produced Still, which is a faith-based movie released during the pandemic. And I'm sure a lot of us will be in this story. Grossed 32 million Naira in the cinemas during the pandemic. You know, that's an interesting story. Being born in Joss, he's also the founder of Justified, a, a platform that talks about everything relating to Joss. I bought a t-shirt, I think like in like the early um, 2000s, so when there was a crisis in Joss, yeah. So that, yeah. That, that's a good so, ladies and gentlemen, this is Dimbo Atia. Uh, please welcome him the Covenant Nation way. Put your hands up, put an emoji, or say something. Just welcome him before we start our session today. Thank you very much, guys. Okay. Thank you. All right. So we're having a few welcomes. Okay. Anyway, so let's go on. 
So okay. um, Dimo, can you just give us an overview into, I mean, how, how did you get into this better thing? You know, what, what was your, your reason to be, did you stumble into it or was it always by design? Okay, like filmmaking, you mean? Filmmaking, yeah, filmmaking, sorry. Yeah. I kind of stumbled into it, um, to, to be honest. Um, I, I, I grew up with a very independent mindset. And so I wasn't one of the people that uh, went to school hoping to do a nine to five. I, I don't know where I got that from. Uh, I think it was because of my mother's uh, independent spirit. I think it was because of my mother's independent, my mother's independent spirit. And so, when I was in school, I was just there without a direction to where I, what I wanted to do. But I kind of had interest in doing urban and regional planning, which for so many of you that do not know what that is, is a study where you study how to, to, uh, to, to plan cities. So it's called urban and regional planning. You know, it's, it's, they work hand in hand with architects, developers and all, but they pretty much plan cities, you know. So I just started doing that because there was technical drawing in it. I get to do some drawing. I just pretty much started doing urban regional planning. But something happened in my life in 1996. Uh, we decided to organize a riot in school and I was expelled from school. And uh, I was home for a while without doing nothing. And uh, my mother's best friend, who was the director of this uh, Nigerian Institute of Journalism, came to visit one day and saw me loitering around and being useless to myself and decided, you know what, can this guy come and just join the school and just be doing something? And that was my introduction into the creative world because the moment I went in there, I met a lecturer called, I met a lecturer called Malin Awa. He was teaching radio um, presentation. And that's how I got into it. I just, something about my creative juices just started flowing from the moment I got myself into the Nigerian Institute of Journalism. And it just took off from there. I just started having interest in creating more things, uh, radio jingles, television, and that's pretty much how I got into this. So. I pretty much believe that if that riot had not happened in 1996, I'd probably be sitting behind one desk at the Federal Secretariat and designing cities that no one will ever execute the plan. I'll be collecting government salary and, you know, be doing some, something that was that. But I thank God for my life that that happened. Don't go and organize riot. I'm not saying organize riot, but for me, I thank God for my life that that happened. <laughs> and I found the direction and that's how I got into all of this and the moment I got the first opportunity to produce anything on a national scale was um, was first of all Niger Diamonds it was more able to give me an opportunity to produce Niger Diamonds it was a 26 episode uh, mini tv series that I produced it was my first time of producing anything on a national level and so she was impressed with it and that's how we did the um, uh, she gave me to the moment to more at some point and and I it just grew you know, and that's how my relationship with her started. And when Sons of the Caliphate, the idea came, we said it to her, like I always say, in less than 10 minutes, she was okay with the idea. And that's how we were able to produce Sons of the Caliphate. And for me, it has always been take the opportunity and run with it. So I've, I've always wanted to do things better than what I've done the last time. That's how I've been able to get to where I am today. So that's pretty much what uh, and how I got into all of this. Wow, thank you very much for that um, interesting overview. So um, we're going to go straight into the issue today because distribution is one of the big things that you know affects a lot of us um, filmmakers. So I'm going to ask you, how important is it to speak to distributors before going ahead to make your film? You know, is it is it you know is that chicken and egg dilemma? Do you create it first and then talk to them afterwards, or do you talk to them first before? you know, um, creative. First of all, that is a very, very um, interesting, oh, let me just put it, that's probably one of the, one of the smartest things to do if you were going to produce a movie and you wanted it to go to the cinemas. Um, but truth is, the landscape in which we, we work with is, is very, very unpredictable. And so a lot of times distributors don't want to commit to things that they've not seen. A distributor will only commit to you when he, when he sees the product, when he sees an effort, when he sees that there's something happening. The only time that I know for a fact that a distributor will listen to you and go ahead and do a deal with you is because they already know what you're able to do. So for example, I'm going to call names because this is how it works. For example, 
Ink Blood, which is a production company that has produced a wedding party, so many other things that you're seeing, who's the boss and da, 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 because they've had a relationship already with distributors. They already know that by December, Ink Blood was going to bring out there. So the distributors go to Ink Blood and say, we, we had, let's start talking about your next film. Do you understand? Or Ink Blood will go to film one or Genesis and say, we have an idea for a film we want for December. And so Genesis will now say, okay, fine. So we're going to open up a door for you in December. Get this movie out. You already have this window. Or if anyone will say, you already have this window, go open it up. So um, the way it works, um, I don't think that it works well for people who are coming to the industry newly because the truth is the distributors are there to make money. And unless you have produced something that they know will bring them money, they won't be discussing with you and say, well, okay, we're going to distribute you even when they've not seen the movie. So most times this happens only to people who already have produced movies, people they've already done business with, do you understand? And, and it's easy for them to say, okay, we know what Dimbo is capable of doing, or we know what uh, Kulia Afonla is capable of doing, or we know what uh, Moabud is capable of doing. So that conversation can happen. But it's almost like in every field or every aspect of life, people always relate to you when they know what you're able to do, when they, they, see, they can see, they see what you're able to do. Uh, sometimes when people just give you the opportunity, it's them taking a the gamble. But a lot of times they will prefer that they see what you've already done. So it's easy for them to commit, you know. So for distribution, unless you have a very good relationship, unless your faith is very strong, unless you are very, very persuasive, uh, it's always not a thing that happens for people who are coming into the industry newly or you're just producing your first film. Uh, because the distributors are also, because what happens is the distributor gets your film and he has to contact all the other cinemas for them to pick it up. Most times they make a decision to show your film based on, first of all, let's see what this movie looks like. So you have to send them the trailer. They send it to these um, cinemas and they look at the trailer and they're like, okay, this movie looks like it's going to make some money. Well, I'll just do, I'll play it in my cinema. So they, by that time, they need to make sure that they're getting all the 68 screens in this country committed. That's how it works. So unless you have something something tangible, it's always a very difficult thing to have uh, distributors. But there's nothing wrong or there's no harm in trying. So like if you can, if you have a contact with the distributor, get in touch and let them know what you're trying to do. Find a way of convincing them to get on board. But I can bet you that you're not going to get a date until they're very sure that you have a product, until they're very sure what you're capable. So this was my first relationship with distributors. And I know that next time when I call them on the phone and say, I'm going to do something, they'll definitely will want to pay attention. So that's how, that's how it works. Okay. So again, the second question is sort of tied to this. That's for a newbie now, someone who hasn't produced anything that is, um, that a distributor can, you know, put their money on. How do you build that relationship? That, that relationship and the part mm -hmm. B to that question is you said Niger Diamonds was the first thing you produced for Mo, right? Or the first thing you ever produced. Yes, yes. produced. So but how, how are you able to to did Mo take a gamble on you? Or I mean how were you yes. able to just make that uh, transition? Absolutely. You know? So let me explain. So I I the, the the first TV show I ever produced was my my TV show. It was in Joss. Uh I produced it with 5,000 naira. It was a very short, simple a TV show that I produced with some friends around. And, and so that was pretty much everything that ever produced. So when I was told that Mo Abudu was looking for a producer for a new TV show, in my head, I knew I could do this. But it was Mo Abudu. How am I going to convince this woman to give me this job? So let me explain what happened. I had to think about, I knew that there were going to be other producers that were sending entries or they were sending the application. The first thing that came to my mind was that I needed to stand out from these people that were going to be applying for this job. How was the thing? I thought very hard about it. And then the idea entered my head. I had a CV, but I did not want to go and submit a, you know, that blue binding thing that they would do, or you just type the CV out and just submit. No, what I did, I wish I still had that thing. I, I don't. What I did was that I turned my CV into a magazine. So I went and I did a photo shoot myself, suit everything. And I designed, I'm a graphic artist. And I designed my CV. I was the front cover of my CV. Do you understand? My CV was a magazine. I had a picture in front. And when you open inside, everything that you needed to know about me was designed in a way that looks like a magazine. So it was like a pamphlet. It was a two-page pamphlet. 
but it looked like a magazine. I did the photo. I sat down. The title of the, the, the magazine was Dimbo. You know how you put a title and then the picture on it, and then you have small, small things as written. If you see it, you think you're reading a magazine. That was what I did. Because I'd never done any production before. It was more Abuju, and I needed this job, and I needed to stand out. So that was what I did. So when I went to Ebony, uh, no, it wasn't Ebony, like well, Inspire Africa office, Okuawa Street, I remember very well. I walked in and I was told that Mo Abudu was in the studio. She was doing something in her edit suite. And they went and told her that another applicant has come and she said they should bring me upstairs. So I went upstairs. Now, let me tell you why she said they should bring me upstairs. Because when I arrived, I gave them my CV. And they took it upstairs and they gave it to her. The moment she opened my CV, she wanted to see me. So she said that I'd be brought upstairs. Yes, the moment she, because it was different. I can bet you of all the entries that came in, that was the only one that came in looking like that. I'm sure initially she didn't understand what it was until she now understood that, oh, this guy's CV is actually a magazine. She asked that they bring me upstairs. So I went upstairs and I entered and she turned and she looked at me. And she said, you're Dimbo Atia, you came all the way from, from Abuja. I said, yes. She said, okay. She said, and meanwhile, in the whatever, because the, the question that they had was, how are you going to do a project like this? Da, 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 da. That was one of the questions. And I did, a, I did a producer's note. So it was like a page. And I explained how I was going to do the show. That's how it caught her, wow. her interest. So she asked me to sit down and said, have you written a script before? I said, no. She said, well, you're going to go and write a, an episode of Moment to Mo. They should give me a computer. And that's how I went in there. And I created an episode of Moment to Mo. And I wrote it down my own way. As a matter of fact, I didn't even know their own format. I just created my format that day. Did one, whatever, whatever, packaged it in, typed everything. And by the time I finished, I got the job before I left that office. I didn't even know. When I got home, I got a text message that said I had gotten the job. That was how, and I'm not even kidding you, till today. But that, but the other thing is that that's how Mo Abudu is. She loves when she can find people and give them an opportunity. That was how in, 19, in 2008 or the 2007 when I did the project, it was five million naira to do the whole of that production. She sent every couple of that five million naira into my account when I was contracted. Every dime. As a matter of fact, when I started the work, I was doing meetings with Diamond Bank, which was a was sponsor, and Mo Abudu was so confident she didn't even want to go for the meeting. She would send me to go for the meeting. So that was how I was able to convince more. Maybe I was lucky. She's the sort of person that likes people like that, you know. But the other thing was that I, I was deliberately, intentionally did things in a way that caught her attention. Now, that's how new people can get into the industry. When they say, go and do an audition, look at the brief and ask yourself, if people are going to do it this way, how can I do it differently? It is always a thing that if you're new in this industry and you want to break it, you need to find new ways of doing it. I tell you a story about a photographer. So he was hired to do photography for, no, he wasn't hired to do photography for, for, for a wedding. He went to do photography for a wedding. And at the time, you know, so his creativity was so on point that when the couple were going to cut the cake, every other photographer was gathered and they were waiting for the couple to cut the cake. But he saw a different picture. He saw a picture of photographers gathered and trying to take a picture of a couple cutting the cake. And that was his frame. And so when he took that, it was probably the most powerful picture anybody had taken in that wedding. Because all the photographers had one perspective. They were all gathered in one place and they were looking at the picture from one end. But he stood out and saw a picture where the couple were there and the photographers were there and that made his frame. And at the end of the day, they had a photo of them cutting cake and every photographer was focused on them. That was him stepping out and doing something different. If you are new in this industry and you want to break out, you have to step out and do something different because everybody else is doing the same thing. You will not be noticed. If you are a director, what kind of director? If it is a short film you're directing, what kind of directing are you doing that you're going to stand out and be different? If you're going to be a producer, how are you going to produce this thing to stand out and be different? That is the thing that you must start thinking about. If you're going to be a writer, how am I going to write this thing to look different? Because somebody will notice the fact that yours was different. It is a fact. If you do it differently, people will notice that yours is different. You know, if you, people will notice that yours is different. So it's very, very important that if you want to break into the industry, make sure that you find an angle where you're doing things differently. Now, if we're talking about distributors, how do you break it? To, that's the thing. So if you know a distributor, if you have to study a film one, how do they operate? 
what is it that film one likes to do all the time? What kind of movies do they distribute and how do they make the money? So you have to start thinking to yourself, okay, this is how I'm going to get film one's attention. Shay, that used to do comedy films. Okay, fantastic. I have a comedy idea. There's a story that I have that film one needs to see. But how do you go about it? How do you go about getting Moses Baba Topes attention? Because if you're going to come with comedy, you have seen comedy, you have done so many comedies. What are you going to do new that will catch his attention? It's very important because you can't just do anything and they don't have the time to just take anything and put in the cinemas. I mean, there's a story about how they got a new movie and then displaced other movies so that this one, because it's about making money. These distributors are not NGOs. They are businesses that have to make money. Wow, thank you for, thank you for that, Jimbo. You've been able to cover a number of very important things. And what, one of them is, is the, the concept of creativity and, and um, being different or standing out. I mean, I find your story to be, to be interesting of how you package yourself, you know, yeah. uh, <laughs> you know like, like a brand, you know, yeah. and you put yourself out there to the point that somebody who had never met you before wanted Absolutely. to meet you by all means. Yeah. And, you, you know, I, I, I just think that that's, that's something that really cannot be, it can't be taught. It's, no, it's let, something that let, has to come from, yeah. You were going to say something. Hello, Dimbo, why are you saying something? No, 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 it wasn't me. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, so so, so again, P, um, the, for those listening, he's just giving an overview of how he got, you know, his first gig. Um, I mean, talking about small, that, that may have seemed unreachable at the time, but using the genius of creativity and, you know, just presenting himself differently, was able to get that gig. So we'll go on further on this subject of distribution. Um, is, should newbies aim for a cinema release first? I mm. mean, are there, uh, because it seems like that's the model that works in Nigeria, you know, yeah. like you, you have to release first in cinemas before other yeah. avenues if you want to make money. So if the answer is yes, what are the necessary elements that filmmakers need to consider in, in having a film uh, or having or distributing by cinema? See, I don't believe that anything is impossible. Uh, I am a man of faith, so, so I always believe that faith works, but I also, also believe that hard work is also something that rewards, you know, and I don't believe that nothing is impossible, but the truth is that there are realities on ground that you must face, even if you're facing it. These are things that you must apply for your faith to work. Because of course, we know that uh, faith without works, you know. The truth is that distributing a movie in the cinema is not the easiest thing in the world, especially in this country. And that's because I just experienced it. My film just did 10 weeks in the cinema and it just ended this run last weekend, last Friday. So I have a very good understanding how it works in the cinema. And to think that this happened even during the pandemic, that is why there's a statement in my bio that says, I made 32 million with the movie during the pandemic, because even without pandemic period, distributing the movie was a difficult thing. Imagine doing it now in a, in a situation or in a time where things are really very difficult. The truth is that if you're able to do it, going to the cinemas first is a fantastic way of starting. But it is, I must warn you, it is one of the toughest things that you're going to do. And it's probably one of the most money consuming thing that you're going to do because nobody is going to put any dime on you. You do it yourself. Don't get it twisted. Distributors do not put money on your project. Like, like in this country, what they have is the avenue to showcase your theme. Every dime that would take that thing to the cinema, you're going to pay for it yourself. They don't pay a dime. And as a matter of fact, you're going to share with them the same amount of money. Let me explain. If you're distributing a cinema, a movie to the cinema, first of all, you must know that you're going to be paying money for the censorship of your movie. It has to go to the censor's board. You're, you're going to pay money for advertisement. Every little publicity that you're going to do, going to the cinemas, you're paying everything. As a matter of fact, the cinema distributor will bring to you options of, so what they have are platforms. So for example, they have radio platforms, they have billboards, they have all the avenues they can advertise. They will give you a bill of what you can do, anything from 5 million to 10 to 15, depending on how much money you have. 
So this is a lesson that you must learn. If you're going to make a film for the cinema, part of your budget from day one has to have money for publicity. So if your film is going to cost 30, 20 million to produce, your total budget will be 30 million because you need that 10 million or that 5 million naira to go to the cinemas for publicity. So make sure that from day one, before you even start writing your story, even if you finish your story, your budget has your marketing money involved in the budget from day one because you're going to need that money to go to the cinemas. You're going to pay distributors money to put up billboards, to put up, uh, to do posts. As a matter of fact, that is not even enough. So while we are distributed, while our distributors, we already pay them that kind of money, we now have to find a publicist outside of the setup. That one is a whole different thing. They are the people that make this thing trend. They find people who can trend your film. They find ideas of how they can do things to promote your movie. That's a whole budget on its own. So you're dealing with multiple people when you go to the cinema for distribution. Now, it's a lot of money because at the end of the day, it's not money that you're going to recoup. It's money that will push your movie. And I'll explain why you shouldn't worry about recouping the money in the cinema. If you can, it's very, very good. But the truth is that it's always very difficult. It is hard and it's always very difficult. And let me explain. There are 68 screens in this country now and they're spread around this country. If you want 68 screens to work for you, you're going to have to publicize the entire country so that people will know that your film is in the cinemas. And that is also a way that can, 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 can chop you money. You know, so for new people coming into the industry, it's always a burden because first of all, where do you get that kind of money? The truth is that nobody is going to trust a newbie, somebody that has not done any movie with millions of naira to go make a film. It's not even possible. Before I made my first film, I had done a, a I done short films. I did a TV series on my own. And then I did my first feature film, which was free on YouTube. I had to do that just to test the waters. 600,000 hits in one year, I was happy. I'd said to myself, if these were people that walked into a cinema to watch a movie, I probably would have made some money. But what that did for me was I created a community of people who wanted to see more of my work. So it was easy for them to run to the cinema when they saw, oh, this is Dimbo, the person that did drawing strength, those brought out still falling. It's easy for them to move. So when you, when you have to start, you have to start and do something so that people begin to get, get. so if, you, if, if, you're going, if I'm going to advise newcomers, don't make your first film a cinema release. Trust me, unless you have the money or you know where you're going to get the money from, do not attempt to make your first film a cinema release because it's going to be a lot of problems. And don't, don't get it twisted. A lot of the people that go to the cinema to see movies, most of them go there because of names. So if Jordan Stevens will put a, cinema, a movie in the cinema and people will rush to go see it, more about the people who rush to go see it. Funky Akindele, people who rush to go and see it. Kaede Kasum, people who rush to go and see it. Because these are names that people can trust when they go into the cinema, they're going to see something. They will not pay attention if you're not the one, if they don't know you that much, you know? But I'm going to come to the secret of how you can get people to go into, your, into the cinema. So if you advise, if you ask me, I would advise that please do not waste your money to make a film to go to the cinemas if, if you do not have the right money to publicize it, because that is what will kill your film in the cinemas. Okay, am I, am I there? Am I still there? Yes you, yes, you are, you are. We can hear you loud. Yes, you so, are. Okay, so me, I'll advise that as a new person, when you're making a movie, make an experimental movie. Try it first, put it out on YouTube. You can make money from YouTube, why? Because you can monetize your film on YouTube if it is originally yours. So you need to make sure that the content is originally your music that you're using is original. You can make money from YouTube. That's the first place to gain audience. It's very important. Forget about cinema because you're going to spend, let me, let me tell you, to be honest with you, we had a budget of 20 million to shoot Still Falling and we had another budget of 10 million to do publicity. So our total idea for the budget for the movie was 30 million. That was what we had. You know, but by the time we had finished this movie, we had gone to the cinema, we were at 45 million. And I can't tell you where that money came from. Trust me. I think that at some point people were just coming because they know it's Dimbo. They trust that they can, they can, they saw quality of some things that I've done. And so it was easy for them to jump on board and say, and at the end of the day, I think we were almost at 12 million uh, just for publicity. And we made, so we were 40 something million and we only made 32 million in the cinema. Don't forget that these 32 million were sharing with with the cine distributors. At the end of the day, we might probably go home with like 15 million, which is, which is grossly inadequate, but I'll tell you why it's a good thing, you know? So, so for newbies, if you decide that you want to go to the cinema, nobody will stop you. 
It's your money that will stop you. If you have the money, you can go. If you don't have the money, I'd advise that you do and put on other platforms. Africa Magic can buy it at a very ridiculous price, but you know that it's out there. Create a name for yourself. You can put it up on YouTube and monetize it. You can make some small money for it, depending on how good the movie is. If you get 600,000 hits in a year, that's good money that can come in for you. You may not recoup everything, but you're going to get something in your hands. But if you decide that you want to go to the cinema, there are ways that you have to go. First of all, the first thing that you're going to do is make sure that you have a story idea that is sellable. It's not every story that is meant for the cinema. You know why? Because the average person that goes to the cinema leaves the comfort of his house. I have an 85 inch TV in my house. The TV in my house is massive. But sometimes I feel like just entering the car and drive all the way down to the cinema to go and watch it. My best place to watch cinema in Abuja is Gateway, Genesis. Their cinemas are new, the sound is fantastic, screen is great. I live in, in uh, I live like almost 10 kilometers or five, about 10 kilometers away from the cinema. And that is what I do. I drive from my house to go and watch. Yesterday I was there to go and watch Kong and Godzilla or something like that, because the ambience, there's something about staying in a cinema hall, but I have an 85 in TV in my house. I'm going somewhere with this. People who leave their houses to go to cinema expect that when they go to the cinema, they gain an experience. Something, so they are spending their money to eat corn and, and drink Coke and sit down in a the cinema. They want that when they come out, they feel like they've spent money to sit down and watch. So first of all, your idea for the movie has to be solid. It has to be a story that people are willing to leave their homes, drive all the way to a cinema, 10 kilometers away to go and sit down and watch a movie. So first, your idea has to be good. The story then has to be fantastic. It has to be very interesting. I know that now in Nigeria, everything is about comedy, 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 because that's what people are. Nigeria is hard now. Everybody is suffering. So I can understand why Nigerians want to just ease and just go and laugh about something and forget about their sorrows for the two hours that the movie is playing. Other than that, if you do a La Femme and Jola, you're on your own, because that movie was well done, but it it, it crashed in the cinema because Nigerians are not ready for any intellectual thing to go and sit down and be thinking deep about something. No, they rather see Brother Shaggy shouting from beginning to the end of this movie and they're happy that they came, they enjoyed something and they went back. That is what is trending in Nigeria. And even the distributors will tell you it has to be funny. Sadly for the industry, that's what it is. But I'm not saying you must make comedy. Even if you're going to make comedy, this is your opportunity to do comedy that is properly done. That way you're standing out, just like I was saying earlier, because everybody seems to be doing the same thing. They're casting the same. I mean, you can watch five films in a day and Broda Shaggins, all of the five films, or Ellen, all of them, man. you know, that kind of thing. That's how people are doing. What if you can find new people that can make people laugh hard? That is another way of doing it. So your story has to be on point. It has to be very, very good. Do you understand? It's very important. Then your casting. This is for those who want to go to the cinema. I'm telling you the points, the things that sell, things that make you work. So first of all, the story idea, then you have a very good story written, and then you cast it. Now, the casting is very important. When we were writing Still Falling, we knew it was going to go to the cinemas, and we needed to go to a human angle site, a story where people can connect and relate. That was the first thing that we thought about. And then when we were writing the story, we had people in mind. We had Nigerians in mind. We knew that Nigerians could relate to the story that we were writing. Then it came to casting. I already knew from day one, day one, who and who were going to be my, my male lead and my female lead. Sharon Oja and Daniel Effing. You know why? Because I'm in the industry and I know that Sharon Oja at this point is probably one of the hottest young, um, um, what do you call it, um, actresses out there. Daniel Effing, I can confidently tell you, the girls will soon, they, when they see Daniel Effing, they're like, hey, 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 Daniel Effing. If you put those two powerhouses together, that was a powerful combination as far as I was concerned. And it worked perfectly. The reason why we got to 32 million in the pandemic was because of those two major people. You know, we had a good story, two major people were there. You know, so it's important that you think of these things. It's very, very important. And trust me, these actors don't come cheap. So if you're going to go to the cinemas, you have to pay the price because you have to pay actors that can drive your story and make it work. You know, so when we cast um, Daniel and, and Sharon, we knew that they were going to sell this movie. Sharon and I have been good friends all the way back from Joss, so I knew her a long time ago. We've talked about her working with me, but when the time came, this was what we needed to do. So it's also very important that you do that. Then production value. 
after you have cast and you have to come and shoot, the production value is very important. Production value is pretty much all the elements that make your picture or make your story look good. So for example, so you have a character that you say is a billionaire. If you're going to show him at home, his house has to look like a billionaire. You can't go and put him on one pecker looking chair and say the house of a billionaire. Nobody will believe you. Do you understand? I'll just give you an example. That is production value. So for us, first of all, it was from the technical angle that I wanted to do production value. I have an array of red cameras in my office. I have lenses. I could have shot that movie with the red cameras I have in my office, but no. What I said to myself, if this is for God, then we're going to go the extra mile. So I called, um, 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 what's his name now? Ah, Kinsley Ogoro. And I told him, I said, sir, I want to shoot on Ari and I want to shoot with Cook lenses. You need to go and find out what those things are. When well, you shoot with a Cook lens and the Ari Mini, oh my Jesus, you don't understand. You shoot it on a raw format. Picture can go anywhere in this world and it will be celebrated. That cost us alone just to rent equipment for 15 days that we shot still falling was 7 million now. Because they sent a whole truck down from, yes, 7 million naira to that camera, you rented 200,000 naira a day. I'm not even talking about the lenses. I'm not even talking about the grip. Yes, our bill was 7 million naira for grip and camera that came from, and I'm sharing this because this is church, this is us, so that you guys can understand how it is. But that is me putting value. I could have shot you with the equipment that I had in the office. I have red cameras, I have, lenses that can work but i i said to myself if this is going to be global then i need to go the extra mile and that was what and it's, it's for god why should we do mediocre for god so the production value was what it is if you see the picture of still falling in with your raw eyes you scream that's the first thing that you start shouting oh more see picture that's what you're going to see and everybody that went to the cinema confessed that this picture looked good those were the things that contributed. When, 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 when we needed, we went to a hotel room, we're looking for, so production value, I'm going to quickly say that so that you understand. I was looking for a particular location for my lead female character. And that place is at the World Trade Center here in Joss. They have like a, like a upstairs building and they had one place that was already staged for, 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 for customers. If you want to buy, they take you in that amazingly furnished. And it had a skyline view of the city. I wanted to shoot in that place so bad that I offered anybody that could get me to shoot in that place two million naira. Because it's probably until today, nobody has been able to get to shoot in that place. I offer, I'm not even talking about paying the place. So the person that will allow them to say, oh, yes, come and shoot there. I was willing to give that person two million naira. And I'm not bragging, I just want you to know that that is the extent that you must go for production value. If you want to get something, you have to go all the way out. So there were so many things that we had to put in the production that made it work. I got one of the best hairstylists in this town, in Abuja town. You don't understand. The number one hairstylist in Abuja town was the one that did hair. It, it, was, it didn't come cheap. Makeup artists came all the way. And this was, and this was Tony's personal makeup artist came all the way from Lagos to come and do makeup on this production. And this is money that I was spending. At the end of the day, if you see the picture and you see everything, you understand. Now, when you put all of these things together, they create a content or a product that nobody can resist. As a matter of fact, before we finished shooting, distributors were already in on our case to come and, and, and distribute so that they would distribute it. Genesis Picture got in touch with us and they wanted to distribute Still Falling. Why? Because pictures were already going out from set. Sharon was on this production, Daniel N. Panampasi Paul, and Senator the Comedian. What are you talking about? Kunle Remy. No, no, I need this. this is distributor's um, world. They got in touch and they said they wanted to distribute this movie, you know? So it was because they saw value in what we were doing, they approached us. And that is how, so this is for those who are willing to go to the cinema. Your father is rich or you have a rich family or you have 10 billion sitting somewhere and you can commit that kind of money, it is okay. But those are the things that you must do so that you don't just go and produce anything and put out there. But for those who cannot afford 10 million naira, 5 million naira just for publicity, Please, I beg you, when you do your film, put it on YouTube, you can make money from there. Or the other platforms, you can take it to Airtel TV, where they pay you money for people who click to watch your movie. That's another place that you can make money. But for theater, I can confidently tell you, if you do not have the money, you are going to have issues. But if you're going, first of all, story idea has to be excellent. Story has to be fantastic. You have to cast very well. Your production value has to be out of this world. Those are the things I make now. For me, we spent almost 40 something million naira, but we only got 32 million naira out. 
we're going to share that money with the distributors. At the end of the day, I am still under, undervalued in terms of cinema, but see the beautiful news about it. Platforms like Netflix that look out for films that come out in Nigeria will only offer you a good deal if that movie does well in the cinema. So the way it is right now, the, the way they are talking about our movie with our distributor, if this goes through, drawing straight or still funding is going to recoup its investment and maybe a little, a little change on it. That's what I'm saying. Jiget. Because if you do badly in the cinemas, they will also now think, ah, this film did not do well in the cinemas. But they use that to rate your movie. So we need 32 million. For them, it is a good number because that means people went to go and see it. So they are willing to put it on their platform because they know more people would like to see it. So they make you a good offer. Do you understand? Aha. But before Netflix came, if you didn't do that much, then that means it is a loss, you know. But now that we thank God there are platforms that are looking for content. When you do very well in the cinema, you're definitely going to get people attracted to your product. Even if you don't do well, they just probably offer you less. But whatever it is, please note that for any film that you make in this life, it is a product that perpetually can make you, can bring income for you. As long as their platform is growing and they're looking for content, your film can always make money from plat As I'm talking to you right now, we're having conversations with distributors who want to dub Still Falling in French. Now, France has a, there are francophone countries that the French world has to, has to feed, Canal France Plus and all those companies. So they're looking for Nigerian content to fit their African audience. And so they're making offers. So if I go on Netflix, which is a non-exclusive um, deal, non-exclusive means that I can take it other places. Sometimes they can do exclusive deal with you and say, we don't want you to take it another place. We're going to offer you the money. Sometimes they'll just offer you money and say, okay, you can take it other places. So you see, if it's on Netflix, I can easily sell it to Canal Fast Plus and they'll dub it in French and I'll be making money from two places. It can go to Airtel TV, I can make money. So once you have a product in your hand, you can equally make money from anywhere. Oh, thank you very much, Jimbo. It's, uh, it's as if we should just keep going on and on because, <laughs> you know, <laughs> because every, every I mean, you, you, you've been able to break it down very logically. So you start with the story idea and then the script and then the casting and then production value. And I was just thinking, you know, the extent to which you went to, to get, especially on production value, um, you know, did, did you, you is, is that how you've always been or did you have a mind shift on a certain production you were involved in? I always like, so for me, I always like to do better than what I've done before. So my first, my first film is on YouTube. You can check it out, it's called Drawing Strength. When we did Drawing Strength, we got all the accolades. People loved it, people liked it. It was a beautiful movie, I loved it myself. But then the other thing for me, okay, so one thing you must understand with me, my act of worship is excellence. That's how I watch film. My act of worship is excellence. Like some people know how to sing, some people know how to give, some people, that other people, everybody has his own act of worship. My act of worship is excellence. So when I say I'm doing for God, I imagine what God will do if he was the one that is doing it. So there's no way I would do something and sacrifice to God and it is, it is poor. It is not even possible, that's not my mindset. Other than that, as a producer, I always think about how I do things better than what people are doing. That's always been my thing. So when I was going to shoot this next movie, the first thing that came to my mind is that it cannot be anything close to this one or less than it. It has to be far better. So in my head, I'm thinking if we're going to get beautiful pictures, we're going to have to shoot this thing on Ari. And the Ari camera does not come cheap. Like I said, it's 200,000 naira to rent for a day. Multiply that by 15 days. It is the set of lenses that I, I use, the Cook lenses, which is pretty much industry standard. They, you know, that is Hollywood. Those lenses come, I think they're like 250,000 Naira to rent a day. Multiply that by 15 days. I'm not even talking about the grip. A whole truck from Lagos came down. Why? Because I needed to shoot that way. Now for anybody to shoot with the Ari and make you good pictures, you have to get a cinematographer or a DOP that knows how to use this equipment. And those guys don't come cheap. They are expensive. You know, all the actors that came on board, these were people that we had to pay. We had Liz Ame, she's a legend. You don't pay her peanuts to come to leave her baby in worry. Come and come and do drama for you. Are you okay? But Dr. Panapasi Paul is a legend. You can't just offer him anything. That is a man of God that you have to say, sir, 
Thank you for honoring me. This is what I'm giving you. It has to be solid. I'm not even talking about the actor. Sharon Oja works under a management. So you're even having a conversation with her manager. Daniel Effion works under a management, you're having a conversation. So these are things that for me, I knew that I needed to put in place. When they came to Abuja, the accommodation feeding, everything has to be on point. It's a production. Everybody had to be wearing a uniform on set. So you make t-shirts for everybody so they can wash. They have like two or three, three pairs. That is money that goes into production. You know, all of those things, they had to be there because for me, I knew what I wanted. I knew how I wanted to achieve it. And it had to be done right. It's very, very important that you do not take it for granted. I'm confident sitting in my office now and Netflix is pricing my product, which is good for me because they see that this is good and we can put it on a platform. Now, what it has done, it has, it has shown me within these people that, oh, they have a respect for my work. Tomorrow, when I approach them, and I said to them, I have an idea for you. They might say, oh, yeah, we want this to be a Netflix original. Take $5 million. Hey, I don't have money. You know, that kind of thing, you know? Yeah, so it's very important that you put premium on production value. That's the only way that you're going to show that you have done something nice. And for those of you who are Christians, if you're doing this for God, if it's faith-based that you're going to do this, if this is a ministry, you must always understand that your God is not a mediocre. You cannot do less. It has to be more. Because if you cannot trust God to do it for you, then who are you going to trust? Then who are you doing it for? You know, so you have to fate it. You have to also be bold and say to yourself, I need to get this done. Do not cut corners. If you want Ramsey Noah on your production, go for Ramsey Noah. Spend the money. That is why the world, they do things better than us in the world. If David o can wake up and spend 5 million naira, sorry, like 600 million naira on a music video. Do you understand? We were here hoping and uh, trusting that God. No, you have to go out and you have to be bold with it. You know, so it's very important that those things, that production value. So for me, like I said, first of all, is an act of worship. Secondly, it is a mentality that I bring to my work. Every time I want to do any, every time I get an opportunity to do a new production, it is me doing better than what I have done before. It is something that works in my head. And you have to go with that kind of mindset. You need to tell yourself, how can I do better than what I've done before? It has to be better because you cannot compromise on quality. Forget what everybody else is doing. Yes, they have, forget I can only make millions, 600 million with uh, uh, more the quality uh, or more ghetto. But if you put it on, a, on an international platform, will you compete with other things out there? No. The sense is that she made money. Well, that's really much the approach. You want to make money. So make sure that you're making something that will make you money. But do not compromise on the quality. It's very important that you do not do what others are doing. So if you plan to do comedy, which is what is selling, you need to write it right. You need to cast it right. You need to get it done right. Because the truth is, as I'm sitting right now, our next project is also a comedy, but not comedy in the Brother Shaggy, the normal ghetto thing. No. The approach is that we're going to write a proper comedy that when you laugh, you laugh genuinely because these guys are making you laugh, really laugh. And then it's also a faith-based story, and it also has to do with music, you know. So already we're talking about the ideas of how it's going to happen. I'm looking at how it's going to be 10 times better than still falling. You know, it's still falling did 32 million. We're hoping that this will do more. That's the, that's the mentality. So please always make sure that you're thinking ahead and you want to do better. Ladies and gentlemen, Dimbo at Tia in the house. If you're joining us, this is the ABCs of distribution for film and theater producers. So thank you very much, Dimbo, for your honesty. I think that's one of the things that you have brought to this conversation. There's a lot of uh, mystery that, you know, this industry is shrouded in, in codes and clicks and cartels, you know, but you've been able to sort of break it down for the for the newbies. Thank, thank you very much for that. I think I have just two more questions before I open the floor, because I'm sure people do have a lot of things to ask. So is there a market for short films? OK, so let me explain what a short film is. OK. A short film is pretty much a marketing tool. The way it was designed initially, short films were made as a marketing tool or a pitching tool. Let me explain. So before now, what film producers would do would like write a whole story, like write, like they have a feature length film idea, but because they needed to get investors on board, what they would do is they would take a scene or two from the feature length and shoot as a short film. So that way, when you're meeting with investors, they get to see an idea of what this feature length thing would look like. And then it's easy for them to now say, okay, we like what we see. We're committing to you doing a feature length film. That's how the idea of short film started. You know, so it was pretty much a pitching tool, pretty much a, 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 a marketing tool. But then over time, people now decided, you know what? They now became experimental tools. Like 
you go into making short films just so you see what it looks like your filmmaker so as a director you want to test yourself as a director you want to direct this and get it when i came back from film school in 2012 my first film my first short film was was uh, is titled um, the flip i needed to test all the things i learned in school i did some projects in school but when i came back home i needed to do my first directorial and it was a short film you know, a 15 minute short film. And then I did another short film, the second one. And then I decided, you know, at this point, I'm very confident about what I do. So short films, a lot of times are done for these reasons. Now there are other times that short films have become um, um, advocacy tools. So NGOs will hire you to make short films so that they just give a quick message. And as a matter of fact, most of the things that you see online, the skits that you should see these days, most of them are actually short films. You know, they are skits, but then you can actually qualify them as short films. Now. And is there a market for short films? To be honest with you, I do not know anybody except MVVO. There's, a, there's an online thing called MVVO, I think, that is owned by the lady who does Afrif. They had this platform where they were buying short films, but I don't know about that now. But what I can confidently tell you is that short film puts you out there and it exposes you to what you can do. Now it goes back to the platform where you can easily put your videos for people to see and you make money from, which is YouTube. So you put your short film on your channel on YouTube, and if it is good enough, people will trip there to go and see it, and that turns to money for you. But I'm not aware of where anybody would buy your short film and put on a platform. I really don't know, except for this one that uh, the African lady does. Other than that, there's no African magic will not buy a short film. Um, Netflix will not buy a short film. Uh, a short documentary, 30 minutes they may, but not a film you know so a market for short films so if you're going to make a short film just know that you're making an experimental film just to show what you're able to do and attract the people that can give you the money to do a bigger one that's what it is and most times it's just for you to showcase what you're able to do and then you can put it up on youtube and make some good money from it or you put it up online on, on instagram on your igtv and people take a hit on it and whatever it is you know so that's pretty much it, but I don't know of an existing market where people can buy. Maybe if you Google the, the website, maybe there are platforms out there that can do that, but I'm not aware of that yet. Hey, thanks, Jimbo. Um, if, you had to if you had to choose between, between feature, feature films and TV series, which would you go for? <laughs> You're putting me in trouble now. <laughs> I love, I love TV series. And I'm proud to that, why? Because it gives me the platform to tell the story more. Do you understand? Yes, I love the fact that I can, I can do so many things with the story. Like Halita was 240 episodes. So imagine what we did in 240 episodes. That was exhausting, but at least we told the story. And even at that, people were still asking for more. And I'm wondering, where do these people want us to get this story from? 240 episodes. It's a thrill for me to make series because that gives you an opportunity to really expand on the story. The short, a, a feature length film can only take you two hours of, of telling the story. And so you're crashing things, you know, but that also, it is, it is an avenue to show how excellent you are in terms of, um, what do you call it? Telling a story in two hours. That's also a craft on its own. So anybody that can tell you a story in two hours, the people that are actually bow for are people that can do a skit in one minute and tell a story. It's not the easiest thing in the world. It's always chilled and relaxed when you can do a 240 episode. That gives me a lot of enjoyment when I have to sit down and consider, oh, who is going to die in this next episode? Yeah, we're going to kill somebody. Like every time I walk into the writer's room, the first thing I ask them, who died? And then they will start laughing and say, this guy playing God. But that's what it is. Like you decide who dies in the production, you know, that kind of thing. So the truth for me is always a TV series, you know, but I love doing both. But I think TV series simply because it gives me an opportunity to tell the story in a more broader perspective. Okay, we're going to open up for questions now, um, but I'm just going to ask what's We've talked a lot about film. What, what's in it for someone who is a theatre producer in terms of distribution? Any thoughts on that? Theatre, when you say theatre, as a stage performance? Stage, yes, I mean stage. You know, that's a community on its own. It has its own... Uh, stage productions have been successful, except for now that uh, the pandemic has caused, you know, people getting worked up about walking into a, a place where there are so many other people. But before now, stage has been successful. Somebody like uh, Bolanle Austin Peters has successfully done fantastic stage shows that earned her a lot of money and recognition, you know. And a lot of times, 
um, distributing the stage plays are mostly done by the stage companies themselves. So they always plan their own. So it's not like there are yeah, distributing companies out there that can say, okay, oh, we're going to do a national tour, this, this thing, and this is how we're going to do it. A lot of times the production companies themselves do that. So they decide, okay, we're going to do a five city tour, Abuja, um, Inugu, Patakot, Lagos, and maybe Kano or something, you know? So they go find these other venues and look for local sponsors and do this thing themselves. You know, but but there's a community of people who love to. I was shocked when I went for a theater presentation one time and the hall was packed in Abuja. Abuja that has people that like to behave like um, divas. They take their time to do things. And the place was packed. And in my head, I'm like, what in this Abuja? You know, so it has its own community. And people love when a stage, a show is well produced. You know, that kind of thing. So yeah, I don't think that for distribution, you will find people who are willing to distribute stage plays. A lot of times, if you're going to do it, you have to distribute it yourself because I do not think that they feel that it is a viable place where they, they're going to make so much money, unlike the cinemas, where people walk in, in 68 screens and you can make 600 million like Funky I Kindle did. You know, so if you're considering theater productions, then just know that if you want to do a three city, whatever, you produce it yourself. Go to Kano, go to Abuja, go to Patakot, get the hall and do all the other things that you need to do. Okay, thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got Dimbo Atia in the house. And right about now, we're going to open up for questions. I'm sure that, I'm sure that there should be a number of questions. So if you have a question to ask, there are two ways. You can either drop it in the chat box or you can raise your hand and I'll, and you can, you know, just voice out your question. Please be as um, open and straight to the point as possible. Okay, let's go guys. Hello, please, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you loud and yes, clear. Yeah, very good. Um, 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 I've been in theater for like 10 years. Okay. I'm thinking of... Um, uh, so, so, sorry, can, can you can you just, just introduce yourself so that uh, he has an my, idea of who's my name is Mui, my, my, my name is Muiwa Okay. I've been doing my stage play, it's a musical, and I've been doing okay. it for like 10 years, very successful, but I just feel that... It takes a lot of strength, especially I learned during the pandemic that should have, you know, if there are, there could be a way to put my, record my play and distribute it. Online. What advice will you, uh, yes. Oh, that, that's a my, brilliant idea. That's, that's a very brilliant idea. As a matter of fact, Bonane Austin Peter has made so much money during this pandemic by, by rebroadcasting all her stage plays on YouTube. I'm sure if you go to YouTube, you'll find almost all her stage plays were on YouTube at some point. So she advertised yes. in the market. So people who didn't go to the theater or the performance had an opportunity of watching them online. So that is also a very brilliant idea. It's a two way you can kill this thing. You can do a stage play and have it properly recorded. I mean, okay, so, I mean, the thing that you must understand is that that is how Tyler Perry also became successful. You know, he actually started with stage plays before he went into becoming famous. So all his stage plays were recorded. If you check it, you will see most of the time that we early had the contact with Tyler Perry, they were mostly stage plays that he now actually adapted into movies. Do you understand? Very Yes, check out Tyler Perry. You'll find out that a lot of his movies that were on big screen were actually stage plays that he started with. And so he recorded them and then you still have them playing and they're distributed out there. Do you understand? So it's, it's a brilliant idea. I think you should try it. Do a production, record it well, edit it well, put all the sound effects and everything. Put it up on your YouTube channel or find somebody that might want to buy it. I don't know who, you know, but I'm sure if you Google, you'll find. But so it's a very brilliant idea. I think you should do it. Hello. Hello, thank you very much. Hello. Yeah, hello, hi, I can hear you. Yeah, thank you very much. That's, that, I just wanted to clear on that. So thank you very much. That's insightful. Thank you. Yes, I think you should do it. Well, I'll do that. So. Okay, thanks, Muiwa. Do we have any other questions? I think I'm fine. That's, that's solved my a lot of puzzle on my mind already. Oh, okay, great. Okay, it's question time. All those nagging issues you've been having on your mind, how to deal with distribution, ask them now.
Okay, so while we're waiting, I have one. Um, Jimbo, do you have a do you have a, an agent that works that helps with your distribution? Agent. Yes. But I have do, you, do, you do, all, do you do all the deals yourself? No, I just I just pretty much getting in touch. They're, they're not difficult to, to contact. As a matter of fact, if you send them a message on their, their if you DM them on their Instagram page, they'll definitely get back to you. Because the idea is that they're looking for content to put on in the cinemas. So if you tell them, oh, I'm looking about for a distribution deal, you know, it's 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 uh, as a matter of fact, I can share with you after this conversation, contacts of um, my distributors who are Genesis. I can give you direct numbers of people you can call in case anybody has any, they can get in touch with them directly. They won't mind. I'm sure Ada would not mind talking to people, you know. Okay. All right, it's question time. It's radio silence, hell. <laughs> Do you have any questions on distribution? Okay, so how about festivals? What what what's your what's your perspective on on festivals? Festivals are a very fantastic way of validation. Um, you want to get people's opinion, what they think about your production. That helps with your ego and your confidence as a filmmaker. It's very important that you put in your productions and your work in festivals because that's where you get to measure and understand how 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 good it is or not, you know. Um, yeah, and then and then if you go to festivals and you're able to win awards or you're able to get entry into, it's a booster because you can always use that as a criteria when you're meeting at, at uh, investors or talking to distributors. You can always say, "Oh, my film won the da 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 award at the so 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 so." You know, like Drawing Strength. Drawing Strength won six awards in the last Abuja International Film Festival. It was unprecedented. No movie in the history, eleven years history of that festival, had won six awards in one sitting. You know, and so that's a bragging right for us. So anytime where I go to, it is part of the CV. Sorry, I forgot to even give you that. I put it in my bio, but it is part of the CV. <laughs> yes, every time right. I talk it, well, I tell them, you know, drawing strength one da 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 da. So we're waiting to go to the AMV years with still for. Mm. Mm. Okay, Dimbo, are you there? You know, so yeah, um, first of all, yeah, I'm here. I, can you hear me? Yes, I lost you for a bit there. So, so you were talking about going for the MVCS. Yeah, so we're, we're hoping that we can take still falling to the MVCS and, and see what we can do about it. You know, so film, film festivals are a good validation. They, 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 they give you bragging rights. They make you confident about the work that you've done. Okay, we've got a question from Ben Chadika. He says, does your movie have to be comedy to make money in Nigeria? That's the thing, bro. That's what we're trying to say. It doesn't have to be. But the film culture, and the truth is that, so will you blame the distributors? Anything for them to make money now is what they're looking for. And what they have found out is that the audience will rather go and see a comedy and, and laugh, and that's where it's making money. As a matter of fact, my film came out in 10 weeks, only made 32 million. Um, the Prophetess, which is a, 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 a potpourri of, of skits, as far as I'm concerned, came out and <laughs> in the opening weekend made 43 million in just three days. I watched that movie and, and I'm going to say it with no apology. That movie is a tragedy and I'm going to say it, but the truth is that it has made over hundred million already in less than two weeks. And I'm saying it, that's a fact. I don't, I, I'm being very honest. But you see, that's what Nigerians or what the distributors are looking for. Because every film that is produced in Nigeria right now that is in the cinemas that was, apart from Igu Wings and, uh, and uh, La Femme and Jola, all of them are comedy. And they're making money, I won't lie to you. So that's a problem. And the distributors have insisted that this is what they want to see. So it's a problem for some of us who really just want to make good films because nobody's going to go see them because the distributors, most of them are not even, sometimes they don't push it the way they will push a comedy. A, what if a one would do on a, Prophet or a Omo Ghetto, they might not do it if it was a La Femme and Jola or something, you know. So if you really want to go to the cinemas now, that's what people are looking for. And it's a pandemic. 
and people want to go and see something and laugh, you know. That's pretty much uh, what's happening right now, sadly. But I mean, we hope that it will change so that other filmmakers can just make good films. And, you know. Okay, next question from Halima. She says that how much would how much would suffice for a low budget good movie to share on YouTube and the likes? Oh. She's very specific. Low budget yeah. but good movie. When you say low budget, and and in my head I'm thinking you're looking at from between three million three to four, that, that that will mean that you're going to cast a lot of very good actors that might not be very popular. And you're going to have to, to work with DOPs or equipment that will give you good picture. Um, so you're looking at around 3 million, 4 million. I mean, uh, if Iroko TV is doing it with their producers around the country, then it's doable. Because that's, that's the list that I know that has been commissioned for the movie. You know, but then you have to tell a story that will fit into that budget. Don't, because you have a three million dollar budget, you have a car that's jumping off Ted Menland Bridge. You're on your own. How you're going to achieve that in three million is, <laughs> or your character, or your character is doing bungee jumping in South Africa. How you're going to achieve that is what I don't know. So you're going to have to tell relatable stories in a way that people can can understand and let it be beautifully written and well cast. Don't compromise on those two things. It's low budget, but make sure that your story is excellent, is good, and then you're getting actors that can interpret. Do not go and cast your brothers and sisters and your friends. Don't do that. Do an audition online. Find people that you know can translate. If you don't know them, it is okay, but let them do it. We did the whole show called Halita, 240 episodes with 99% new audience cast, new cast, yep. and it was a success. Absolutely. It was a it was the fifth most watched TV show on Showmax in 2020. Mm. And they were yeah, all new cast from, all of them were new. I, all of them, I picked them from an audition. I didn't know them from anywhere. I didn't sleep with any girl. I didn't know nobody bribed me to put them on the show. I, they only came for auditions and we selected them. And all of them killed it. Most of them have become celebrities now. So don't compromise on that. With three million, you can tell a very good story, get a very good cinematographer. That three million should pretty much cover a lot of your technicalities and your production value. Actors, there are actors that are good and are hungry for opportunities. You can find them; they're out there. So from three million up, and I'm just saying something that you want to put on YouTube. That's what I'm saying. Okay, thanks, Jimbo. Um, Prosper Okechukwu is asking. How okay, okay. Somebody said, you mentioned that your first production was shot with, with 5K. Can you please ex expatiate on that? <laughs> okay, this was like 2001 or something. It was a long time ago. 5K was a big deal that time. Oh, please don't get it twisted. <laughs> it's almost like 5K now, to be honest. But it was like 5,000 now simply because I had a lot of goodwill that I used up during that production. So it was just calling friends and people that I knew but then not just everybody. So the camera guy was a friend. Uh, the three presenters who were ladies were, were very good, but they were my friends. So I didn't have to pay them anything. The 5K was pretty much for logistics, entering cab here and there. And there was one time that we had to pay for food when we went to a restaurant for them to do a scene. You know, it was a TV show, it was a variety TV show, you know. And that was how I spent 5,000 now. Of course, if you put all the logistics and every other goodwill together, it might have cost me more. But, and that's one thing that you must learn. In this industry, you must have goodwill. It's very important, it's a, it's a bankable thing. It is a currency in the industry. Goodwill is very important. And that means that you get to help others and when you need their help, they help you. Do you understand? It's very important. Like I have people walk into my, business, oh, I want to do this and I need equipment and I don't have money. I'm like, okay, fine. Take the equipment, but you're going to put my name as executive producer. Like, no, I don't have a problem. You know, tomorrow when I go and meet this person, I say, oh, I want to do this production and I need one. It will be a difficult thing for the person to help out, you know. Okay, thank you. Prosper Kachuku is asking, how did you secure your first major film capital? Also, capital to, 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 to produce your first movie. The first film drawing spend the capital, I got it from selling an idea. Um, yeah, I think it was God that just made it that way because somebody walked into my office, a top producer in this country, and the irony of it was that I've been looking for this person to work with for a long time. And there was no way I could meet this person. One day, the person just came and I was told by my second that somebody else had looking for me. And this big time producer walked into my office, said he came to the North because he said that I was king of the North. I started laughing. He said, yes, 
that he wanted to do another production and he knew the only person he could collaborate. This was this was after Sons of the Caliphate. The only person he could collaborate with was me. So I was like, okay, fantastic. So we went into, I already had this story idea that was sitting on my laptop. When I pitched to him, he almost started jumping in my office. So we agreed on a co-production, you know. But then somehow, I think a month after that, I just started feeling in my spirit I didn't want to do this thing because God had asked me to do something else. And I was busy trying to do something else. So I walked up to him and I said to him, I said, you know what? I need you to buy me out of this idea. He was shocked. Like in his head, like, are you crazy? I said, no, I'm not crazy. He said, this is going to make money. I said, yes, but I have another assignment that God wants me to do, not this one. He sharply signed it, bought me or paid me money. And that's how I raised money for, for my first feature film. But that's a very peculiar or very unique conversation. I know that most times the best way to do is your first film, you always have to raise from family and friends. It's very important that you raise that kind of money from family and friends. And truth is that there are other things that you have to do, other investment that you have to do. If you want to do a movie next year, start saving now. Stop going to Mr. Biggs or stop eating at Mama Cass. You're saving all your money. You know, stop buying things that you don't need. Every penny that enters your hand, just put it somewhere. If you're going to shoot the movie by December next year, start saving today if you do not have the money. You'll be shocked how far you can go. Now, the idea is that when you start doing something, people will see the effort and they will definitely help. But if you do not have any avenue to do it, nobody wants to put his money on something that they don't see or they can't see. So if you want to do a movie from now to next year, start saving now. Whatever you have, split it into two. Say, well, I'm putting 5,000 naira aside for this, my film. Don't eat it. Don't buy clothes that you don't need. Recycle. It's a sacrifice. You have to get there because nobody will carry money and just give it unless you come from a rich home. So you have to have the mentality of saving. It's very important. For me, I was lucky enough to sell a product and an idea and it paid off at the end of the day. You know, but for some other people, you have to go through this route. Some other people, your parents have so much money, it's easy for you to go to them and get the money. But if you know that you do not have that kind of access, you start saving now. If you get, five, if you get 1K, divide it into two. You'll be shocked how much 500 Naira you will save for the next one year and how much it will take you, how far it will take you. And then goodwill, like I said, bank on goodwill. Help people out. If they're doing production or somewhere, volunteer and say, I want to be here and help you people out. Tomorrow, when you go back to them and you say, sir, please, I need your help. They won't say no. So be banking on goodwill and be saving money. Thank you so much, Jimbo. Thank you. Guys, do we have any further questions? You know, this has really been very enlightening, um, you know, um, because um, especially following your story and, you know, the concept that everything starts from a seed. You have, you start somewhere, everything that will be in that big tree tomorrow starts with the seed that's in your hand today. So you know, the ingenuity that you bring on board, the challenges that you will face and the things that seem insurmountable too. You know, I can imagine a, someone sitting in Joss and, and thinking of Moabudu and, you know, how, how, how those bridges can be built, you know, and that everything is right. just, you know, within, you, within your environment. Okay, great. Guys, do we have any, any, any more questions? I have, I have one more question. Please go for it. Um, I, I really like yes this movie. I really like this conversation because uh, it's coming from um, somebody that is uh, is in faith. I want to ask a question. I've always been having issues with um, auditioning people because for most of my plays, I use people who have been with me and we believe the same thing in terms of you know the um, being uh, the message you want to preach to people or present to people. You don't want to present it in a churchy way, but at least you also come from people who believe in the message. Yeah. How do you um, what what uh, how do you come about casting people okay. who might necessarily be in the space of entertainment? They might not be uh, they might not be tag Christian ministers, but you know that at least you have a relationship with them, and you know do you understand this question. I absolutely do. I absolutely do. Okay. So one of the things that you must understand is that there's a message to be sent. First of all, what must happen is that from your own end, you must be fortified. It's very important. And I'm talking about your own spiritual life because it is, you are the messenger. So your own life is very important that it's fortified. Whatever project that you're doing must also be fortified. So my wife is a 
solid backup when it comes to spiritual backup in terms of, ah, she can cabbage for the whole day, protecting the project. So once you are covered from this side, every other thing does not matter. Why? Because it has been taken care of in the realm of the spirit. Do you understand what I'm saying? It is very important that once you put this thing in the realm of the spirit, the only thing that I do next is to execute. Now, one of the things that you must understand with filmmaking is that the craft is very, very important. So you might have a Jim Jim Christian, but the person is not a good actor. You want to cast that simply because he's a Jim Jim Christian. At the end of the day, you lose it because the craft is not good. I give you an example. The lead female actress in my movie, Drawing Strength, is Sophia Lakija. She's Muslim. Sophie is a Muslim. When I was casting her, that was even not part of the conversation. I just cast her because she was excellent in her craft. That was the first thing I was looking for. Any other thing I knew that has been covered in the realm of the spirit, nothing can happen. As a matter of fact, the testimony was that Sophie met me after the production and said she's considering becoming a Christian because she grew, she grew up in a Muslim house where Islam was not really a serious thing. So religion was not a thing for her. But when she went through this process of doing strength, strength for her, it was like a testimony. At some point, she told me that she actually find time to pray as a Christian sometimes, but she comes from a Muslim background, you know. But that didn't matter because when you're watching it, the first thing that comes to your mind is, oh, she's a sinner. She's, no, that's not what you see. You see a character because she killed the idea of Lamy excellently well that you're consumed in Lamy, not even Sophia Lakija. I mean, if you go to her page, uh, you see her. She's a very risque person. She does all the freaky things that you can imagine. But if you watch Still Fall in Drawing Strength, that's not the first thing that comes. Mind. The first thing that comes to your mind is the character. And so excellence also in getting people that can do the craft is very important. So when you're casting for a production, I get it that you're doing, uh, it might be, if, if it's in church, church might insist, okay, church members, I get that. Like I know that in my church here, a family worship center, of course, you have to belong to the drama group. You have to be in the drama group. You have to do DTS to be a member of the church, to be in the drama group is a process. That is different. But when you're independently producing and you want to make sure you get it right, even if the person is a stone worshiper, that's not your business. Your business is that you have committed this thing to God, you have fortified it, you have done every spiritual assignment on it, and then you allow it to go. This person will come and it will just function on the craft level and any other thing will be irresponsible, inconsequential as far as I'm concerned. So I've worked with people in, 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 in still falling. Most of the people that I've worked with, I didn't select them because of their spirituality. I just selected them because they're excellent in what they're doing. But the testimonies that have come out from people that have seen Still Falling, you won't believe it. It's unbelievable. Like we had testimonies coming. At some point, we had to set up, like, I had to set up a prayer session where she was praying for all of these people, you know. So, first of all, like I said, everything that you're going to do spiritually about your production comes from you. Everything as you leave to God. Then you now go into the realm and say to yourself, I'm looking for excellence. So anybody that comes and can interpret your character excellently, that's the person that you're dealing with. Even if the person is coming with a bag of snakes, unless you're afraid of snakes, but once you're fortified in the realm, there's nothing that can happen to you. Nothing. God will use the instrument like that. Thank you very much. You answered it well perfectly. I'm grateful. Thank you very much. I appreciate Thank that. You. Imbo is on fire today. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he is. Yes, he is. <laughs> okay, so so um, um John Ogwe has a uh, in my opinion, I think Sons of Sons of the Caliphate is probably the best Nigerian series ever produced in terms of production value and relatable story. Why did it end abruptly and what lessons did you take away? Again, Dave, I'm, I'm, I'm picking this on you. Um, Sons of the Caliph, I hope that's not the end, though. Please, though. Uh, <laughs> we have a season three that has been commissioned almost two years ago. We had actually written the story. We started the production, but then Ebony Live, um, I think Ebony Live went into, so if you notice, at some point, Ebony Live left our stations, like they, they commissioned in Nigeria. I think they went into, there was a problem that they had with multi-choice. I'm not, I'm not saying that's the issue. But those were so many of the things that contributed to the fact that Ebony Life did not come back on the table to finish the project. Um, so what would have got carried away with so many other productions, Netflix things have come and so many other things, you know, so the Sons of the Caliphate so suffered that thing. Last month, uh, we had a conversation with the Ebony Life people and they're interested in bringing it back. When, to be honest, I don't know. So the way we told the story, because we knew there was going to be a season three, that was how we, we were supposed to do a season three, but we haven't. But we're hoping that season three will still come back on the table. 
And the reason why it succeeded was simply because we did not hold back on making sure that we got it right. And that was pretty much researching. I live in the North, so I know the Northern culture very well. So all those things apply to it, you know, in terms of getting it right. If you notice, if you watch the first season and the second season, the production value in the second season was even far better than the first season. It was because we stepped up our game. And the idea is that we are stepping up our game also in the third season. So wait for it. It's going to come. I don't know when. When Ebony Life decides what they want to do with it, they'll let us know. But they are still very interested in doing it. Fantastic. Fantastic. Great, great, great. And I can really attest to Sons of the Caliphate. Guys, if you've not seen it, I encourage you to go watch it. You know, it's, Netflix, it's so you can watch it. Yeah, it's on Netflix now. Yeah. Okay. Any more questions, guys? We have Dimbo for another eight minutes. Any more questions on product, on distribution? The room is open. Okay, so it says, Prosper is asking, what's your perspective on children's movies in the industry? Wow. That, so so the, the, I've always been thinking about content for children. Uh, it's a market and it is a, it is a very, 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 very huge industry that nobody is doing anything about, you know. But the other problem that we have is the talent in children. Um, a lot of times it's not the easiest thing to cultivate in Nigeria. Why? Because the family structure in Nigeria does not focus on developing children's talent. It's all about school, 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 go and get certificate. So we're not encouraging and we're not building talent in young children. So when you look for children actors, it's always very hard to find quality. I mean, if you check Hollywood, once they cast a child, it's almost excellent. You know why? Because there are families who understand that these children have the gift. In Nigeria, we don't do that. We are afraid of exposing our children to all of this. So it's always a difficult thing to get children, but it is an industry that is fallow. It is an industry that is rich and anybody that can tap into that thing we're going, is going to make a lot of money. And I'm not even kidding you right now because there's a need for content to be created. And I'm talking to people of the kingdom now. The devil is up there and he's doing so many things. He's catching them from childhood. They're putting this thing into curriculum. They're putting it into their games. They're putting it into their toys. We must counter that. So somebody has to step out there and do something about children's content. And I tell you, you'll be shocked how much impact you're going to make. Okay, thank you very much for that. We have, I think we'll take the final uh, question from Ekpo, is it Chinyere? He's asking, if one has a good faith-based story, would you be willing to co-produce? Well, to be honest with you, it's something that I'm looking forward to do, but right now I can, I can confidently tell you that I'm not in a place to do that. Why? Because I have so much right now happening. I'm currently on two TV series productions that will take me the entire year. And we also have a plan to do another movie this year. So right now might not be the best time. And we most times I don't like ideas because uh, on, because of uh, copyright issues, you never can tell. I probably might be working on something close to what you have sent me to see. So I'm always very careful about that. I wish that I had the time and the space to take in ideas. I probably would, but right now I'm not in the space to be able to do that because I have two series that I'm working on right now. They're going to take me the next one year to produce them. And then I have another feature length film that is coming. So I'm really, really booked right now. Maybe in the future, you never can tell, but whatever it is, Try and, and do it yourself. Go out there and, and don't be afraid of anything. Put put your put your foot out and see what you can do about it. Fantastic. Ladies and gentlemen, we've had the please can we just applaud Dimbo Atia um, and just thank him for this time out, you know, with us today. Um, I, I think this is this has been one of the you know deep deep reaching stations we've had you know especially because of the genuineness of information that that's been given Dimbo, thank you so much thank you so much we really appreciate you thank you so much um, we have, we have something that we call, yeah thank you so much we have something that we call shoot your shot which is like the conclusion so we, so we hold these conversations every sunday between four and about 5 30. um so i'll just quickly hand over to to okay you had mentioned the distributors contact you, you talked yes, about I'll that send, i'll give you the so you can share it amongst oh, okay, good. get in touch with them i can give you that information that's okay 
All right, thank you. So I'll, I'll just hand over to my, my colleague very briefly, Bessie, to just do shoot your shot for another maybe four minutes and then we can all take our leave. But from the bottom of our hearts, from the Covenant Nation, from this community group, all the, all the leaders, everyone who is present and absent, we really want to say thank you so much. And from my wife too, you know, who, who broke out this deal? Uh, <laughs> she flogged me if thank I didn't you. do this, so you know. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you so much. Uh, thanks so much, Dimbo. So Bessie, over to you. Let's do, let's do shoot your shot very quickly. And then we can be out of here. Bessie, you there? Uh, Bessie, are you there? Oh dear. I think she just got disconnected. Uh, okay, Bessie. Oh, it looks like um, she has to come back again on board. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. More thank yous are coming in, Dimbo. Thank you very much. Really, 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 really appreciate you. Thank you so much. Okay, Bessie is back now. Bessie, you yes, want to do it? Okay, fantastic. I was saying thank you to Dimbo for hosting this session and thank you, Dimbo, for your you know, for sharing your experiences, your perspective, your your thoughts, and just letting us understand how a lot of these things work. So thank you so much. Thank you very much. Um, right now, we are going Hello. Let's see. Over to shoot your shots. So it's open. So basically, if there's anyone who wants to be assured that any specific person who's here today, you can do that. Or if, um, can you hear me? Okay. Yes, yeah, we can now. Breaking. Has stabilized. Oh, um, can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Yes, we can. Okay. Um, I was just saying thank you to Deepo for hosting this session and thank you, Dimbo, for sharing with us. Thank you. I'm sure each and every one of us is going to leave this place with some valuable um, insights. So thank you so much for just spending this time with us. So right now, if there's yeah. anyone in the house who would love to shoot their shots, um, what you have to do is just raise your hand or signify in the chat box. And you can shoot your shot directly at someone or it can be sporadic whatever you want, but just um, signify interest. Mo, you are, do you want to shoot your shot? I see you, I audio. you. And I, I still did not understand the idea of the shoot your shot. Hello? Okay, let me explain. So basically, <clears throat> if there's something, if you have a skill, for instance, if you're a DP, a producer, an actress, whatever, right? It's basically you selling your market. You know, you can sell oh. it to a particular person. Let's say if you want to work with someone, if you're a DP and you want to work with someone, right? You can ask them <clears throat> if it's possible for you to take this conversation off here so you can chat privately and see if there's that possibility. Especially if they're willing to hear you out. Nimbo, I, I, do, I, think, I sing extremely well and I write songs. I'm a songwriter and I sing. So I can make wonderful soundtracks. Oh, fantastic. That's a very good. wonderful one. Okay. As an excellent soundtrack. Excellent. Okay. I can then, send some of my songs to you. Okay. You can get my contact from Depot and then let's let's start just WhatsApp chat after this. I'll do that. Thank you very much. Okay. May I Thank ask you, Bessio? Ben okay. Ben, ben Chia Dika, you see a, sorry, this is my own me trying to shoot my own shot too. <laughs> <laughs> Ben, uh, is that is that his picture on his um, on his uh, whatever? Is that what he yeah, looks? That's, yeah. that's yes, you. That's, well, that's, do you act by any, by any way by any means? Do you are you an actor? Oh yeah, I'm, I'm primarily first an actor. Sorry, I didn't get that. I am first an actor before any other thing. 
Brilliant, because I would I would love to have a conversation with you. I'm looking I'm looking for a look like that. Somebody for a series that I'm about to watch. <laughs> oh, finally, finally, I get it. <laughs> See, guys, it's it's happening. Happening. Connections are being formed. Please mm. collect, my, collect, my, collect my number from Deeper. Let's let's talk. All right, I will. Don't come back. Don't back. I'm not back with you. Bye. Please do collect, your, collect my contact from Deeper. Let's talk. I, I like your look. It's, okay. it's, it's refreshing. It's, we go for TV. Thank you. Let me go and grow my own gray beard now. All right. <laughs> <laughs> but I really would like to leave now because I have a lot of people waiting for me in the office. Thank you so much, David. And, and thank you very much. Your you name is Bessie Don. I like your name. I might use it someday as a character name. So that's. Thank, thank you, Dimbo. We'll let you. We'll let you off now. Thank you very much, guys. Sincere apologies for rushing over. Uh, so please, everybody that I've asked to get my contact from Dimbo, please do that and let's talk. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So if it's okay, I would love to leave now. That's that's fine. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, you guys did that, I swear. Hello? Bessie, are you still there? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, so Andrew, I wants to shoot his shot oh. to take a little Elizabeth, please go ahead. Um, I just want to ask Mr. Ben if it's the same Mr. Ben that came to OAU to shoot a stage play for um, anti -toying. Hello? So, Muiwa, um, Bessie, are you there? Yes, um, Muiwa asked Ben the question. Okay. Yes. Is, is Mr. Ben there? Is this still there? Hello. Oh, probably left uh, already. Um, yeah, hello. No, he, he, Hello, Mr. Ben. I said, are you the one that came to he, shoot a stage play for me, Mr. Antitonio Ogundeji, many years ago? Probably. Where, where, which place? Where is that? Pizziata, Pizziata, inside Pizza. Done so, like, Charles, Mr. Him. Ben, can you hear him? Yes, I can hear him. He said something about the pit theater. No, can you guys hear me? Hello, can you guys hear me? Yes, we can, Mr. Ben. Good evening. Yes, good evening. Um, uh, oh dear. Can we have um, Bessie? Yes, I'm back. Oh, okay, all right. Um, I don't know if Mr. Ben answered uh, Muiwa's question. I didn't quite get this question. Uh, okay, Muiwa was asking if you 
um, did a stage play for anti towing in OAU many years ago. That must have been a play with Troy just a few more years. Okay. Muiwa, if you can hear him, yes, he did the stage play. And he's on the advanced subgroup with you as well. So you can contact him if you want to speak for that. Um, I think that's all for today for Shoot Your Shot. Elizabeth Lawal says she's a writer and she's looking for opportunities to write on a series. So if there's anyone looking for a writer and they have a series they want to produce, Elizabeth Lawal is shooting her shots with that. Andrew Ali was supposed to shoot his shot, but I think he's left due to network issues. Is there anyone else who'd like to shoot their shot today? Burala, do you want to shoot your shot? No, not today. All right. Not today. Okay. I'm just stepping in. All right. All right. Thank All right. You. Okay. Um, I think with that, we can call it an evening. So thank you everyone for yeah. showing up. Um, we're so grateful. We love that you show up every time. So thank you. The recording will be shared on the group. Um, have a lovely evening and we are going to be sending out feedback forms so you can let us know how we've been performing right and let us know areas we can improve so look out for that within the week um we'll be sending out google feedback forms thank you and um have a lovely evening thank you. all right Thank you very much, everyone. Thanks for your time today. Catch you next week. Next week we have an, another interesting session, so we'll be we'll be sending out the invites for that. So have a blessed week, everyone. Take care. God bless. Bye bye.